Hey everyone, it's Aaron Wilson for HeadsUpSittingGo.com. Today I'm going to be doing a leg finder for Stephen, who's one of the most frequent posters on the forums. So first hand we have King-9. It's a standard defend read list versus a min raise. Versus 50, we are going to have the best hand some of the time, but we can't call multiple barrels. And Villain will have Echo to share versus us and gets to play the rest of the hand in position. If our opponent does have a hand like Ace X, Queen 10, or Jack 10, our only clean out is the 10 for a straight. So for those reasons, I prefer just to fold. I don't mind calling here with King High if the board was more dry. So on the turn, Villain does fire a second barrel and we just have to fold. So here we min raise queen jack and on this flop it bar just see bet smaller because his pairs and flush draws are calling 45 just the same as 30 or 35. I think we also set up pot stack ratio better to fold out 6 on a later street by betting 30 or 35. And on the turn we borrow quite big. And our opponent folds. So there I just expect you fold it out a hand like Jack 10, Queen 10 or bottom pair. That's going to fold now knowing you're probably going to shove the river. So he just gives up on the turn. So we min raise ace jack and our opponent three bet shoves and we fold. Uh, yeah, we definitely be calling a three bet shove here with ace jack. I can maybe see your reason why if you're thinking you're dominated here if he is ace queen or ace king. But I'm just going to show you real quick on poker stove why we should be calling a three bet shove here with ace jack. So if we call the pot is 990 and it's 455 to call. So in this situation we need 45.9% equity to call this all in. I'm just going to bring up poker stove here and we'll go over a typical 3 bet shove range. So our hand is East Jack offsuit. And let's just assume that our opponent is three betting none all in with Aces Kings, Queens, Jacks, East King, East Queen, King Queen, suited King Queen offsuit. So his three bet shove range for value, let's just say I will not even We'll not even put in th some 3 bet shoves as bluffs. So he's 3 bet shoving 2s up to 10s. And I'll not even put in the ace 2d, ace 6 suited. Again, we'll give him a tight range just to show that this should definitely be a call with ace jack. So we'll say he's shoving e 7 to ace jack. And again, he's 3-betting non all-in with all his better ace x hands and big pocket pairs. So that's a 10.1% 3-bet shove ring, which is pretty tight. I think it's pretty unusual you'll find a tighter 3-bet shove range than that. 
so even against the 3-bit shove range as tight as that we only need 45.9% equity to call and we have 57% which is a clear call as you can see I think what you'll find is most people are 3-bit shoving a little wider I think it's not unusual for people to 3-bit shove as wide as this so that 3-bit shove range is 16% and against that range you have 62% equity to call so yeah, you're going to be a big favourite most of the time against those kind of players so that's why I would definitely be calling here I think everyone when they first start playing hypers versus a 3 bet shove their calling range is quite tight here especially in the first blind level but the more work you do on poker stove and other simulations too I think you'll start to realise that you should definitely be calling a 3 bet shove here with the jack uh, when you fold here because you think you may be dominated and you want to wait for a better spot you got to realize that it's a hyper it's only going to really last three or four minutes so more often than not you're actually not going to get a better hand than ace jack and later on in the match if you do get short on chips you're going to be thinking to yourself why didn't i just call his all in when i had ace jack so <clears throat> next time when someone does 3 bet shove on you here you can see now that you should definitely be calling so on to the next hand our opponent just opens shoves and we fold here would min raise king 9 but and it's definitely the second best option yeah it's a good flop to stab our opponent's just going to miss this flop texture most of the time especially given as we limped and he checked back and the flop is ace high we more than likely do have the best hand but it's always good just to fold out his 6 outs So here our opponent min raises and we make a standard defend with king 8. And on the flop it looks like we're going for a check raise. I don't like to check raise these boards too light just because I find players too uh, call too much in general. Uh, 5x is probably just going to shove on you. 3x, 4x calls. Uh, any hand with a 7 continues, even hands like East 10, East Jack call. Uh, even hands with just two over cards call because they're getting good pot odds to continue. And on the turn we overshove. Uh, this is definitely not a play I would recommend. I think if we're going to continue bluffing the turn, we should just bet like 120 and try and fold out his 3x and 4x, which we'll find a pretty tough time calling here given the street just completes. If I was your opponent here and I was playing you, you would really find it hard to believe this overshove just because I don't think you're going to do this with the straight. But yeah, I think if our opponent does fold here, you're just going to fold out 3x and 4x and hands like ASX, with which had a gut shot and over cards on the flop. So yeah, our opponent does fold. So here we min raise queen 9 and we get a pretty good flop here we just go for value straight away which we do 
and on the turn it would definitely bet again. Uh, yeah, I definitely would not check back the turn. Just because he's going to have hands that continue on the turn a lot. And now when this river completes a straight, you're just going to lose value versus those hands. Hands like 9x, 4x. Uh, I was going to say 8 10, but that's completely straight. So we'll see what our opponent does on the river. When the turn goes check, check, and our opponent checks to us, I think it's pretty clear our opponent has a weak range here. So we should definitely go for a very small value bet, like 90. When we just shove all in, I think we lose value to those hands like 9x and 4x, and maybe some worse two pair combinations. But I think they would bad fold the river after the turn goes check check. So I really don't expect our opponent to have a straight here, and that's really the only hand that can call your all in. Here versus a min raise with 2-7 we just fold. 7-9 for around 9.8 big blinds. This is how we can even limp. See so you're thinking about whether to limp or min raise. But we min raise and he folds anyway. Here king 3 suited for 8.8 .8 big blinds. Versus a min raise I think we should just 3 bet shove and capture or fold echo day which we will have a lot of the time and if we are called we don't really mind because we were calling versus an open shove anyway people will still man raise call worse hands at this stack depth too which is what happens Yeah, here I just prefer you uh, open shove a rag ace here for 15 big blinds rather than just min raise folding it. Unless your opponent is really nitty, it's going to be the most profitable play. Our next hand, our opponent just open shoves 13.7 big blinds and we just fold queen 7 suited. Here at 12 big blinds, we can min raise fold or limb stab. but I definitely wouldn't open fold it. Uh, people in general are very passive versus limps. We have already limp stabbed successfully versus our opponents, so I would prefer limp stabbing here than open folding. This is one of the most common leaks I see at endgame is people open folding too much hands instead of just limp stabbing. Limp stabbing a hand like jack four offsuit is just going to be much more profitable than open folding it. Especially against a player like this, I would need a really strong read that our opponent's just hyper aggressive before I open fold a hand like Jack 4 there. And I think Mercenary even has a video which you can check out where he demonstrates how limb stabbing trashy hands is better than open folding them. Here our opponent open shelves for 12 big blinds. I think the way our opponent has been playing so far, he's min raise folding his worse hands and min raise calling his good value hands. So I just expect his open shove range here to be e6 heavy and some pocket pairs. But we do call and he's pocket eights, so we still have around 45% equity. And we do manage to get there, which is always nice. Here again we could limp stab, but I can understand folding after our opponent loses an all in. I think some people can ISO shove lighter after losing all ins where they were the favourite. 
so I actually don't mind the fold if that was your reasoning. And here our opponent open shoves. Jack Queen for seven big blinds is just going to be an easy call. And our opponent does have the same hand. So here we min raise and our opponent folds. We get a walk, which is nice. And yeah, here we'll just open shove, king three suited. But we do manage to get there. So after watching that video, Stephen, my main advice to you would be to keep playing solid fundamentals it's better to do the simple stuff well than the fancy stuff bad so don't run crazy bluffs because you're going to get called too much people don't like to fold pairs at the lower levels so I just play as exploitable as possible almost to the point you are being face up when extracting value but it shouldn't matter just because of the opponents you're playing also at end game I would limp stab more versus open folding you're just going to win way more chips that way than just open folding your hand especially all the trash ones and I would definitely widen your min raise calling range so if you don't have poker stove I would definitely download that and play around with some of the min raise calling ranges and the 3-bet shoving ranges I think those points in general will help you a lot I'm actually going to be doing another League Finder video very soon, which will be turbo format. But until then, this is Aaron Wilson for HeadsUpSetAndGo.com, signing off.